Although it's not known what many ancient megalithic constructions were actually for, they almost certainly played a role in rituals or burials, perhaps alongside other more practical functions. However, there's no evidence they were used as domestic dwellings. So where did the megalith builders actually live? A recent paper published in the journal Antiquity looks at a fortified 5th millennium BCE enclosure in western France that was most likely the site of a Neolithic village housing builders of a nearby megalithic complex. Let's take a look. Western France has some of the earliest megalithic constructions along the Atlantic façade. There are many scattered megaliths in the region as well as groups of them. In the Charente department, where the site discussed in this video is located, there's a particularly significant concentration of dolmens with unusual architectural styles. More than 300 causewayed enclosures have been found in Western France. Although it was thought possible that such enclosures could have been settlements for the megalith builders, dating evidence places them 1,000 years after the megalithic structures were built, and there are no traces of domestic dwellings within them. From 2013 to 2022, an interdisciplinary project compared megaliths and enclosures in Western France built between the mid-5th and the end of the 3rd millennium BCE. The area covered by the research was bordered by the Loire, the Massive Central and the Pyrenees. One of the structures studied in the project is Le Pieu at Charme in Charente. A recent paper entitled The Emergence of Monumental Architecture in Atlantic Europe, a fortified 5th millennium BCE enclosure in Western France, discusses this fascinating site and the role it may have played in the Middle Neolithic. Le Pieu is two and a half kilometers south of the Tusson megalithic complex, which features a 139 meter alignment of five long mounds and is one of the most impressive sites of its kind. Unlike many of the other enclosure sites in western France, Le Pieu dates to the Middle Neolithic around 4400 BCE, so is contemporary with many of the megalithic structures in the region. It's situated on a late Jurassic limestone promontory above a valley and is around 80 metres above sea level, consisting of a curvy linear ditch, a parallel palisade trench, two crab claw entrances and the remains of several buildings. Le Pieu was first discovered during an aerial survey in 2011, with more details emerging during a geomagnetic survey. Archaeological excavations took place between 2014 and 2021. A four to five metre wide U-shaped ditch blocks off the promontory to the west. Four to five metres east of this is another ditch, the excavation of which shows it to have functioned as a double palisade trench with oak posts held in place by packing stones. Further excavations suggested that the ditch and palisade were also continued on the north, east and south sides of the promontory. Close by, archaeologists found bones, lithic fragments, ceramic remains, pits and hearths, which all also date to the Middle Neolithic. The ditch and palisade arrangement is now acknowledged as a key feature of other Middle Neolithic enclosures in Western France. However, Le Pieu also had two unique attributes. These are the monumental crab claw entrances, which up until this site was investigated, had only been found in late Neolithic enclosures. Le Pieu is the only middle Neolithic enclosure to have such features. Also, unlike the late Neolithic sites, the entrances at Le Pieu are made up of single curved ditches rather than pairs of them. These entrances also appear to have been reinforced with buildings consisting of posts held in place by limestone blocks. The existence of these buildings implies the enclosure had defensive needs as well as simply wanting to demarcate itself as a settlement area. Now to the evidence that may show the enclosure was a domestic village for the megalith builders. Post holes within the enclosure show that at least four rectangular buildings existed. These were destroyed by fire around 4400 BCE. These are the oldest buildings discovered so far in west central France. Other debris indicates the walls were made of wattle and daub. A careful analysis of the size and location of the posts has helped archaeologists to reconstruct how these buildings would have appeared, with load-bearing walls, porticos and raised platforms making a second floor. Due to erosion, there are no occupation levels remaining, 
in any of these buildings. However, their shape and size could reflect a domestic function. Also, close to the second building, many pits were found with lithic and ceramic material in them. Although it's not possible to conclude with any certainty that the inhabitants of Le Pieux were also the builders of the megalithic Tusson Long Mounds, there is a direct line of sight between the two complexes. The Tusson Long Mounds have not been extensively excavated and were not a part of this particular project. However, the researchers sought to confirm that they were contemporary with Le Pieux by investigating the quarries used to extract stone for their construction. These quarries were located using geomagnetic surveys. On the surveys, the quarries appeared as hundreds of subcircular anomalies, measuring around three meters in diameter and located close to the tumuli. Once stone had been extracted from these quarries, deer antlers had been deposited in them. This practice meant that archaeologists could radiocarbon date the antlers to see when the quarries were in operation. The radiocarbon dating shows that these quarries were in use as long ago as 4600 BCE, before more intense activity took place between 4350 and 4080 BCE. A previous cleaning of the Petit Dognon Long Mound showed that it had been built using stones from these quarries, which means that, indirectly at least, the Tusson Long Mounds can be dated to the same time as the Le Pieux enclosure. Another three enclosure sites close to Le Pieux have been identified by a geophysical survey, and it appears they were in use after Le Pieux was destroyed. Further research can be carried out at these enclosures to see how the megalith building community evolved over time. At the moment, Le Pieux is the only enclosure site in west central France investigated so far that dates to the Middle Neolithic and may have been a domestic settlement for the megalith builders. I think this is a really interesting paper for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's notoriously difficult for archaeologists to identify domestic sites in the Neolithic because they were mostly constructed from mud brick and wood, so are not conspicuous in the landscape today like megalithic structures are. Secondly, the monumentality of the Le Pieux enclosure stands out to me. Although not as impressive as the stone megalithic structures, the enclosure with its double palisade made of timber would still have stood out as a rather imposing complex. Thirdly, the fact that the entrance buildings were possibly defensive bastions means the Middle Neolithic may not have been that peaceful in west central France. Defensive structures are not something we encounter often until the Bronze Age. In the Neolithic, there are many examples of open hut villages and scarcely populated settlements instead. But if more enclosures are found to have had defensive structures attached to them, then it gives us further insight into the social dynamics across Western Europe at the time. I also think it's interesting that the site was destroyed by fire. This is a common theme across so many Neolithic sites, and it's not clear if this was a ritual destruction at the end of its use, an accident because of combustible building materials and the use of fire for cooking, or due to enemy attacks. I read somewhere that it may have been a practical measure to prevent the spread of disease. On a side note, several domestic settlements contemporary to the megalithic temples have been found in Malta. One of the most extensively excavated is Tachola in Gozo, which is a few hundred metres from the scanty remains of the Tatmarzina temple. Whereas in Western France, megalithic structures appear to have been for burials, in Malta they were for rituals of the living. However, in both places, sacred sites were concerned with monumental stone complexes, whereas domestic sites were mostly made of less robust materials. I guess that's not only common throughout prehistory, but also in the historic period as well. Medieval cathedrals are certainly more impressive than the houses the majority of people lived in at that time. It seems that we've always invested a huge amount of time and resources in structures that reflect a belief in some Thing bigger than us. However, we still don't know exactly what the ancients believed or if any of their beliefs came down to us in some way or another over the years. Belief systems really fascinate me and as most of you regular viewers know were a focus of my master's dissertation but whenever I do videos on them not many people seem interested so I don't do them too often. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button. Thank you to my patrons and channel members for all of your support and I'll catch up with you next time.